All right, so I'm continuing with my series of videos on the Fibonacci sequence from a base 12 perspective. So what I'm doing is simply, or what I've done is simply converted the numbers from the Fibonacci sequence in base 10 to their base 12 equivalent and looking at what the results, um, what emerges from that. So what I noticed is that zeros are showing up at every 12th iteration of the pattern. And so just quickly going over the pattern again, the Fibonacci sequence is when you add the last number to the present number to get the future number. So we start off with the one, adding zero gives you another one, then one plus one is two, two plus one is three, three plus two is five, eight, then you get you know, 13, 21, 34 in base 10, which in base 12 is a one, one group of 12 plus one gives us, a, looks like 11, we call, we say do one. In base 12, the number in the, this column is a, are, is dozens. So we're calling this is do one, do nine, two do deck. Now this number here, the, this numeral looks like an X is called deck. It's similar to an X, but it's got little wings on either side of one of the crosses. And then the other side of the X is a simple straight line. So it's not exactly an X, but it's very similar. I think it might be why the Romans chose to X for the numeral for 10, because this one was already around. I think in our distant past, there was a culture that was using base 12. They came up with these numerals. The other interesting numeral for base 12 is L. This one here looks like a backwards three. And you can remember the name because it starts like 11 L and DEC is like decade or decathlon or any, you know, the numbers that are words that have the DEC in them, there's a root there of 10. So the decade is, is the, probably the best one. So we see this pattern, seven do five, and then a grow. So a grow is a gross, 144, but in base 12, it looks like 100. So the two zeros show up. Then the pattern keeps going, keeps evolving, and we get another two zeros and then after 24 iterations it keeps going this is the next column in the series you know this number comes from adding the last two together and then the next number comes from adding this one to that one and then you can see on the side though that the same zero one zero one zero two zero three pattern continues and that pattern continues throughout the fibonacci sequence every 24 iterations of the sequence it keeps repeating so that's the odometer that i'm talking about and what i discovered uh, if you keep going and you do 188 iterations of the pattern, or just sorry, 288, 144 twice, or another way of saying it is 12 times 24. So if you do this 24 iterations 12 times, then this column starts to repeat. And so at first it's a whole bunch of zeros, all those zeros, till you get to there, then one, then it goes one, two, and note that pattern starts showing up in the next version. So what I've done here is I just started writing out the every 12th um, line of the pattern. I did the base 10 version and then the base 12 version underneath. So you can see the 60th iteration of the pattern, a lot of zeros in there, and then 72. And on the base 10 side, you got, you know, 0, 4, 8, 2, 6. It's, there's not, there's probably is a pattern in there maybe and I think people are aware of a 12-ness, but it really shows up much more clearly when you're actually in base 12 and you can see the patterns. And then there's other patterns that emerge that have a, a longer thread through them. So I went back here and I see, well, there's a there's a one here. So we have this one in the third column. And then in, this is the first, that's sort of the first um, series of 12. And that column is a one. And then in the third series, you get a three. And then in the fifth, we get the five, one, three, five, then seven, then nine, and then L, and then and then, and then do one, do three, do five, do seven, do nine, do L, two do, and so it goes in this in this that framework. So that's now we're jumping in in twenty fours to get that pattern, and then I notice here we we have our our deck which is a ten. So this one goes down actually, it goes 10, 10, then 8, then 6, then 4, then 2, and then on the next one, 
and that it, it goes it goes to the zeros and it goes on. So I went through this last night. I went I, I did all these ones here, then another bunch there, and this took me all the way to the end. I just sort of show so you can see that. I know it's kind of hokey with the paper and everything, but that's just the next column at the very end. After you get to 288, then there's another column. And at the end of that one, you get the end of it is, is, is there's a two here, it's 2100. Zero, zero. So after you do that big iteration, then you do it again, eventually you're gonna get four, then six, then eight there. And so there's another pattern. I was looking at it just now. Here we have on the third column, we have this two. So again, there's a two, and I think it went five. Is that, is that the right one? Two, five, right, then eight, and then L, and then it would be Do, Do one, Do two, to there. So there's, there's the two, and that continues. And then this one here uh, is two, four, six, eight, and then it would be a, d a dozen, zero, but then we've already got the one carried over from the do two, so we have an L. So there's another, there's just, there's just big patterns kind of weaving through this series that aren't, isn't available to us to see clearly in base 10. So again, this is all about the geometry of the spiral, the golden ratio is often called the spiral that's connected to this Fibonacci sequence. And if you just keep going, I think there's a lot more there to explore. So I just wanted to share that with everybody that this is something about base 12 that you don't see in base 10. And that this also relates to the geometry or, or the sim a similar discovery was made in relation to the Pythagorean triplets where when you write them out in their base 12 value, again, same numbers, not, not changing any of the, there's no math, they're not adding or subtracting anything, simply writing the numbers out in base 12. You notice that all of those um, lengths have distances of 12 between them. So again, something that you don't really notice in base 10, you're not really looking for it, but in base 12, suddenly the same numbers appear at the end and you realize, oh, we're just counting in groups of 12. And so this is, this to me adds more weight to the argument that the real, that even pure math or just the, the right way to approach math is in base 12 and that's an, it naturally occurs there's been lots of arguments made in the past by various mathematicians that we should adopt base 12 because it's just better, the fact that it divides three and four and six and two into the your main base, and that doesn't happen in base 10. But the argument's always been, well, it doesn't really matter. It's our own construction, and it's just a lot of work to, to go to that type of effort to change the whole system. But the fact that we can see it's better we know that nature is smart. You know, everything about the natural world and how everything works is very intelligent. And so if there is a base, not that even someone has to have chosen it or not, it doesn't matter. Either way, base 12 is better to divide. And therefore, if you look at it the other way, to multiply and build things in 12s as opposed to 10, it just makes, it's just a better system. So it's natural that it would evolve that way if you want to look at it that way or that, that that it just would be in 12s if there was a choice to be made at some point in the evolution of math or the evolution of the structure, how things are going to be built. So this applies, of course, to the quantum realm. There's, there's, there's spinning objects and the circle has a 12-ness to it. So it's the same thing. If you approach the base 12 geometry, you know, the circle in base 12, patterns emerge that we just don't see. We kind of know the circle is in 12s. There's a basic geometry there, but we haven't really you know, looked carefully. So I, I, I've written a book called Understanding Base 12 Math, How to Draw the Perfect Circle Using Dosinal Geometry. This book introduces you to a geometric pattern that only exists on the base 12 Cartesian plane. So I've made a lot of videos about it and I'm continuing to make videos about it, explaining how we simply have to connect the dots on the base 12 Cartesian plane. That, that plane has a denser grid. There's more lattice points because the horizontal and vertical lines crossing each other generate more points. And it's simply a matter of connecting those dots. And we get a, a geometry that enables us to divide the circle into 360 degrees. And from that, we can keep going, divide it into as many smaller sections as we want. And from that ge geometric pattern, 
evolves or emerges the base 12 version of pi because that that pattern is simply the it, it is constructed by dividing the diameter of the circle into its circumference and a unit emerges that is used on the circumference of the circle to create that structure that gives us all those points and that as you, as you go in as you sort of zero in on the the circumference of the circle that the geometry of those points and what's around them becomes you know very important and, and from that emerges a whole sort of geometry inside of the circle and inside of things and this is what we're looking for in quantum physics right now so this is why this geometry is important that's why it's important to explore base 12. I'm sure there's lots of other fields of math. I've only just started. I'm scratching the surface. So I'm really wanting to encourage people who are interested in math to take the time, start exploring base 12. Just do the math that you're doing now. Just sort of do it in base 12. See what that looks like. How it, you know, I know it's at the first it's kind of awkward and, and confusing and you have to get a base 12 calculator to help, which actually is a huge help. And that's one of the reasons why no one's used base 12 in the past. It's a big first start to just start doing it differently and it's kind of plays with your head a little bit but the fact that we have technology that can help us is a big help you know big step forward and the fact you got this book if you want to get it it will also help you just you know guide you in the right direction you can see what the pattern for pi looks like there's patterns in the base 12 version that are also weaving through those numbers just like this there's patterns weaving through these numbers. And the challenge now is to see what, what do those patterns represent? What does this look like when we actually start to apply, you know, and, and analyze on the base 12 Cartesian plane what everything looks like? So there's more to discover. And I'm hoping that my videos are inspiring you to do that exploration. Join me on this journey. And um, yeah, buy my book. It's available on Amazon. Thanks for watching.